This segment's going to look at fungi. I'm going to look at it in a kind of abbreviated point of view so that we can understand it for the laboratory. When we start out with our phylogenetic tree of life, we've got three domains, bacteria, archaea, both of which are prokaryotic, and we've got the eukaryae. The eukaryae are eukaryotic, therefore cells have membrane-bound organelles. If we look at the very end of this brown part going up, we see the thing called fungi, and it's halfway between animals and plants because it's kind of related to each one of them. We're going to look at a kingdom that has very distinctive characteristics. Everything is heterotrophic. Everything has a cell wall. They are eukaryotic. For the most part, they lack motility in the feeding stage. Some of them are single cellular, and one of the ways fungi reproduce is through budding. And this starts out with a cell with the nucleus on the inside. You can see the two chromosomes, and we're just going to represent them as a small number here. That's not an actual number. What starts to happen is in budding, you get this little outgrowth, so to speak, on the outer wall of the cell. The nucleus comes apart. We undergo mitosis. This is going to produce two new distinctive cells with the same amount of genetic material on the inside of them. Once we have got these migrated out like this, then what happens is we get the formation of the nuclear membrane around it. And as we do that, we now have two cells. We have a mother cell and a daughter cell. Same genetic composition, but the daughter cell is a much smaller size. It will then grow in size to the point that it reaches that of the mother cell. If we look at photographs, these are photomicrographs of yeast cells that are budding. And this is your common yeast, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, that we use to produce bread. Sometimes fungi reproduce by asexual spores. We call these asexual spores canidia, and they might look like that. When they germinate, they produce basically what we call a hyphae, and the hyphae are elongate filaments. The hyphae continue to grow. In this particular case, it is infecting a plant, and it's growing over the plant surface and now ingressing into the plant. It, if left unchecked, will continue to produce a mycelium. The mycelium is basically made up of these little thread-like strands. The little thread-like strands are called hyphae, and the mycelium is a mass of material growing like this. If we look at it in culture media, it often looks like this. It looks kind of furry and fuzzy. It is not the smooth, gooey type that we get with bacteria, but rather it's a more furry or fuzzy type. There are two types of hyphae. One is called cenocytic. It says there are no septa. There are no cross walls. If you look at this, you can see how these look like little pipes that are kind of hollow on the inside. If we go back to our other one, we see septa, or cross walls. This makes it multicellular. Multicellular is considered to be more advanced than single cell. The outer material on this is called chitin, and chitin is the carbohydrates that is the main ingredient of the cell wall of fungi and of the exoskeletons of insects, and chitin is polymerized N-acetylglucosamine. Chitin is very important because it says that it's found in insects and it is found in fungi. If you have ever eaten shrimp, which is a arthropod, the outer part of it is actually made up of chitin. So it's a very durable type material. We could have a, a sporangium, and a sporangium is a cell or sac inside of which spores are produced. Sporangia are quite common. If we look at this, these are sporangia of rhizopus. You can see the hyphae coming up, the hyphae are cenocytic, and then on top of it, it has got a little cell inside of which are produced all these tiny little single-celled spores. These are sporangia. You've most likely seen rhizopus in a lot of different ways. One of them could be like this, and every once in a while you see a tomato that's got fuzz on the outside of it. That's actually rhizopus. This furry material is fungal hyphae. You can see the little white dots down at the bottom, and those are the sporangia that are starting to be produced. Here we've got hyphae of a fungus called penicillium growing, and you can see how it branches. At the ends of it, we see these little inflated cells, and on top of the little inflated cells, we get the production of conidia. 
if you look at it a little closer you can see the inflated cells and then you can see the little conidia being formed and sometimes these conidia are formed in chains this is a little bit different picture but again you can see the little flask shaped cells and out of the top of the flask shaped cells you can see the conidia here you can see lots and lots of conidia and again this is in the genus penicillium this particular one comes off of something like that which in this particular case is doing this nasty destructive rot on this apple what do we do with apples like that well they are fermented down and we use it to produce vinegar so even something like that which is absolutely gross and disgusting and you wouldn't eat has some sort of value to it this is often called a post-harvest type rot. You see this on apples. You see this on pears. You can see this on oranges. So there's a lot of different types of these. Since we're dealing with microbiology, i got to put something like this in there. I mean, this is disgusting. This fungus is called trichophyte. It is what we call a dermatophyte. Up at the top, you see dry tinea pettis, athlete's foot. And you can see how it's causing everything to crunch and fall apart. Next to it, you've got the under the toenail type nastiness. And again, that is caused by these dermatophytes. If you grow it on different media, that looks like Saborodextrose auger. And you can see how it produces a very pretty colony. And on the right, you can see the production of small conidia, large conidia. It therefore is dimorphic. It's got a couple of different forms. And you can see the production of hyphae. To make things even grosser, well, look at this. This is Candida albicans. It causes thrush. It is called thrush when it occurs in the oral cavity. It's called a yeast infection when it doesn't. When you look at the mycelium, you can see on the right-hand side, you've got two different types of mycelium. So this is dimorphic. The mycelium part occurs at room temperature. The yeast form occurs at body temperature. When you find this in the oral cavity, it is often a indication of a compromised immune system normally you find this in infants up until about one year of age or you find it in people who have compromised immune systems such as having hiv it can be a, quite a nasty problem it is often treated topically with gentian violet which tends to kill off the spores very quickly other types of fungi you find this is a leaf that has been colonized by this fungus and the fungus has totally distorted this leaf into this thing that looks kind of soft and white. It's actually a leaf. It's non-functional, but it is still a leaf. This is your common meadow mushroom. This is the one that we cut up when we use in our food. Mushrooms are a type of fungus. They can be used for food. They're an excellent source of protein. This is in the genus Mutinus. This is one that you find in certain areas, certain times of the year. These are called stink horns. They come out of these kind of egg-like structures they pop up overnight and they smell extremely bad you can pick this up at about 10 feet three meters distance it smells like rotting eggs or something like that and the whole idea is to draw flies to the mass of spores up on the top the fly lands on it the fly consumes spores it then takes off and as it takes off the spores will drop off and be disseminated where does this grow this grows in the soil and so you have this massive material growing in the soil and eventually it comes up and it fruitifies about once a year so when we think of fungi great diversity all of them are eukaryotic have a cell wall that's made of chitin are for the most part multicellular they have a filamentous body and they assimilate nutrients therefore they are heterotrophic